Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Liquid natural gas, also known as LNG, has evolved into one of the most important energy sources in the new millennium. It's produced by cooling mostly methane gas to extremely low temperatures, typically around negative 162 degrees Celsius. This removes impurities and heavy hydrocarbons while allowing for easy transportation across long distances. typically using boats known as LNG carriers. And while these vessels are integral to the LNG supply chain, they are second to LNG terminals. These are facilities specifically designed to liquefy natural gas from its gaseous state. store it, or transfer it from massive state-of-the-art tanks. Because shipping is the most effective way of transporting liquid natural gas, most LNG facilities are constructed near the water. Once a suitable location has been established, Construction companies will immediately begin executing plans for various facility components. Including tanks, pipelines, and transfer systems. Most LNG companies will either use their own construction teams or hire third parties specializing in LNG. This helps maximize efficiency, regulatory compliance, and execution. The most important aspects of these facilities are the pipe bridge, which allows for the transfer of the LNG to and from ships, and the recondensers, Specialized heat exchangers designed to recondense any vaporized LNG back into its liquid form. Direct heaters are also employed to convert LNG from its cryogenic liquid form back into a gaseous state. Of course, the primary feature of an LNG facility is the tanks themselves. Depending on the nature of the site, these can be built above or below ground. Either way, they are vital to the safe and effective storing of the product. Unlike the storage containers aboard the ship, most onshore tanks are single-walled. Because of the extreme cold associated with storing LNG, they are typically made of temperature-resistant materials like carbon steel, stainless steel, or even specialized cryogenic alloys. Some LNG tanks can be as tall as 16 stories and have a diameter of several hundred feet. Regardless of their size, the tanks typically include high-quality insulation systems, utilizing foam or perlite, which minimizes heat transfer and reduces the chances of the LNG warming unexpectedly. The tanks are also connected to sophisticated monitoring equipment, which evaluates the tanks 24 hours a day. After the tanks are constructed, 
They must undergo testing to ensure they meet safety standards before any liquid natural gas can be pumped. During integrity tests, engineers will fill the tank with water and then pressurize it in order to test for leaks. They will even send inspectors inside in small boats so they can investigate the inner walls and components visually. For a 150,000 cubic meter tank, this process can require up to 94 million liters of test water. This amount of fluid can take days to pump in and even longer to drain. Water is crucial to the storage, cooling and heating of LNG. This, combined with the fact that transportation is often done via ship, has led some companies to construct floating LNG terminals. These facilities not only have access to endless amounts of water, but are far more versatile than their land-based counterparts. Indeed, Floating terminals can be deployed to different areas depending on demand. While allowing LNG carrier ships to come and go more easily. Perhaps most importantly, floating LNG terminals are generally more cost effective than constructing onshore terminals. as they eliminate the need for extensive land acquisition and infrastructure development. This is where LNG is transferred from one carrier to another, or from an LNG storage vessel to an LNG fueled vessel. This can take place far from any standard LNG terminal, but is typically accomplished close to shore whenever possible. During the operation, the ships will position themselves next to one another and use mooring lines and connection hoses designed specifically for transferring LNG. These hoses must be able to handle cryogenic temperatures, as the substance must remain at a controllable temperature throughout. Liquefied natural gas carriers have been around for decades. However, the construction of new vessels grew exponentially in the early 2000s, as both LNG demand and viability increased. Though they vary in size, most LNG carriers are quite large and boast several unique features that make them different from other shipping vessels. For instance, many LNG carriers are designed with double holes or special circular containment systems. The inner tank, typically made of stainless steel or specialized materials, holds the LNG. Nakalot, based out of Qatar, currently owns the world's largest fleet of LNG vessels. With more than 70 ships at its disposal. Essentially, the fleet acts as floating pipeline, connecting producers of LNG with consumers in a way that is safe, effective, and cost-efficient. Life on board one of these vessels is similar to working on any other large ship.
except all sailors must undergo extensive safety training. Though LNG is mainly safe to store and transport, accidents can happen. And Nakalot wants to ensure that all of its crew members know what to do in such an event. Most of the vessel's time is spent at sea. This is broken up by loading and unloading operations at various terminals. In order to keep crews comfortable, the vessels feature commissaries, spacious crew quarters, and specialized facilities for leisure and exercise. Meanwhile, life on board Shell's Prelude is not dissimilar. Located on the coast of northwestern Australia, the Prelude is only accessible via helicopter. The facility is so massive that it can produce three and a half million tons of LNG per year. which is enough to supply a city the size of Hong Kong. The Prelude is staffed by a crew of up to 240 people. It has extensive kitchen facilities, as well as gyms and other leisure areas to improve the quality of life for workers on board. Many scientists and engineers believe that the future of eco-friendly shipping lies in powering vessels with liquid natural gas. Indeed, LNG is considered a cleaner burning fuel compared to traditional marine fuels like bunker oil or diesel. As a result, LNG-powered ships emit fewer greenhouse gases. Many LNG-powered ships are equipped with dual-fuel engines. Which can operate on both LNG and traditional marine fuels. This flexibility allows them to use LNG in emission-controlled areas and switch to conventional fuels in open waters. The WinGD X92DF is currently rated the world's most powerful two-stroke dual-fuel engine. Developed by Winter Third Gas and Diesel, a leading manufacturer of large marine engines for the marine industry, the X92DF is designed to reduce fuel consumption and lower emissions while still being able to power large container ships and bulk carriers effectively. As liquid natural gas quickly becomes a new standard worldwide, more facilities and vessels will continue to appear. From LNG carriers to container ships to land-based power plants, LNG will soon be everywhere. And the world's ports are working hard to ensure a constant supply of safe, correctly handled LNG fuel. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.